Hello, I'm here with Doug Spindler and Caitlin and Irvin to talk about bank level security. But first, Caitlin has done. I do, but before I talk about that, um, you'll see I have oh, other other finger. There we go. My telescope behind me, and it's actually on right now, and it's collecting something called dark frames, which are frames of like you know photographs with the lens cap on, so it's really dark. And you use it to get rid of or reduce noise that's inherent to the camera in the final images that you take. Now, what's really interesting about these uh, dark frames is that it will pick up cosmic rays as it hits the CCD sensor, which is a lot of fun. Uh, so, and I have an example here. I thought your readers might wanna, wanna see this. Um, so here's some previous darks that I took. I'll share desktop. Here we go. Uh, so this is what a dark frame looks like, on at least on my camera. On the right here, there's a um, this glowing thing. And oops, there's a glowing thing here. That is actually from the camera's internal circuitry. Uh, it releases a little bit of infrared light because it is uh, warm and it comes off as uh, like a glow in these like five minute exposures. Uh, but a lot of these dots, like this dot right here, um, and this streak over here, in particular, you can see it just run down the CCD. That is from a cosmic ray strike. Um, and so, you know, we talk a, a bit in security about cosmic rays interfering with electronics, uh, causing bit flips and stuff, but this is how it happens. And this is, you know, sort of everyday proof that our electronics are being hit by cosmic rays and they do induce voltages uh, as a result. So I just wanted to share that really quickly. Caitlin, yep. can I share a story with you? Oh, absolutely, please do. So, you know, this is something that IBM recognized many, many years ago. And I, I'm curious if anyone knows about this, but a cosmic ray caused a bit flip in an election. And are you familiar with that story? Yeah, for some reason there were 4,096 extra votes. Isn't that interesting? That yes. special number, 4090, mm -hmm. 4096. And I believe it was a town that was a thousand people, exactly. something like that. Yes. So obviously, you know, something was, was a little off on that. And they investigated that. At first, they thought it was voting machine fraud, as I recall. And later, it was pretty much ruled out that it was not voting machine fraud, but in fact, it was a cosmic ray that flipped a bit. Exactly. And you know, when you have your computer on for a long time, you don't restart it. And you notice over time, it sort of acts a little weird and stuff like that. You have to wonder, was there a bit flipped, you know, somewhere along yeah. those lines? And, yeah. and the truth is there probably was. As if, as, well, if you're not using ECC memory, I mean, and that's the whole point behind using ECC memory on servers is that bit flips aren't supposed to happen, but still, you know, it, it is something to think about if you are designing electronics and yeah. secure electronics at that. Surprised yeah. that wasn't used in the 2020 election. I think there have, I think governments are trying to find ways <laughs> to when... induce voltages in, you know, sensitive equipment, but uh, probably not in the, in our election. But when I heard about this about 20 years ago, they said that a computer with four gigs of RAM could expect one bit to flip per year. Yep. So it's not a really that big a problem. It's not, no, but it is no. It is a real thing. Yeah. But, but it is a real thing. I mean, this was an election that or, if it happened to be a different bit, a little bit less significant, could have changed possibly the outcome. The numbers still wouldn't have matched up, though. Yeah. On, on and, a small and, scale, right? All right. Yeah. And keep in mind, Sam, uh, one computer a year doesn't sound like a lot until you realize there's probably hundreds of these voting machines. Therefore, you know, probably the probability is that over a course of a day, one of those machines will have a bit flipped in memory somewhere. Yeah. But I bet uh, the chance of like a hard drive reading a bit wrong, or even for that matter, RAM just reading a bit wrong in a normal course of events is is larger. I think you just need error correction. But anyway. Yeah, right. yeah. Anyway, right. the, the point is it is a real thing that's happening yeah. all around us, even if we can't. Yeah. yeah. Anyway. <laughs> yeah. So so after let's let's there, there's a lot of, of of bullshit in the um aerospace industry and in the computer industry in general. Uh but not so 
but not as much as there is in Japan, it turns out. So uh, there's an article here uh, from CNA, um, the channel newsasia.com. This is an article written by, do we have a name? I really want to give this person credit. Uh, this is just, I guess, by the Associated Press. Okay. Uh, so uh, what ha what's happening is uh, some Japanese rockets are getting fuel from cow poop, from dung, essentially. <laughs> and so apparently what's happening is that they're extracting methane. They're calling this biomethane, although I don't know the difference between biomethane and regular methane, since methane is technically an organic molecule to begin with. But regardless, they're getting methane for the, for the rocket directly from, you know, cow manure, from from cow poop bullshit essentially and they are turning that into rocket fuel which i assume is just part of a uh, methylux like engine type thing where you have liquid methane liquid oxygen and you burn it and it's very polluting that's the thing like a lot of rockets uh, especially if you look at um like the saturn V, a lot of nasa rockets they use hydrogen and oxygen which looks like it's polluting a lot because you see these giant plumes coming out but that's just water vapor Hydrogen and oxygen produces water, right? So, uh, but methane is is not so good for the environment. So I don't know how this is supposed to be more environmentally protective. <laughs> Use cow manure. I don't know, but anyway, that's what's going on. They're they're making rocket fuel from from poop. So it, it's sustainability. It's organic. Yes, it is it's organic. Yes. <laughs> All right. Uh, well. I found an article, I think this is Reuters, let me check. Uh, yeah, Reuters, there's a new law, rule which is expected to do something about robocalls. There is a practice called lead generation where you ask a company for information about something and they say, well, we'll send you our information from our business partners, which means we'll add you to a list and we'll resell the list and they'll resell the list and hundreds of people will call you for spam calls until the end of time. And they are finally cracking down on that practice. And presumably after this, there will be lawsuits and perhaps doing something about the robocalls, which would be awesome. <laughs> so that's good news, possibly. Well, not for the phone companies. They make quite a lot of money off of those. I won't weep for the phone company. You know, when I was like 10, I went to uh, Ghostbusters and there's this scene where someone comes in to rob the phone company and everybody waiting in line applauds. And I asked my parents, why are they applauding that guy? He's a criminal. And they said, you'll find out, kid. <laughs> <laughs> and I found out why everybody hates the phone company. So, you know, if I could jump in here, there was a um, hacker and we're not sure where he's located, but he was uh, dialing 800 numbers. And I'm curious, Caitlin, maybe if any of you have heard of this. And he was essentially placing millions of calls to an 800 number. This was a complete scam. And he had um, over, I believe it's 20,000 different recordings that he would play. And some of them would last from a few minutes early on, but later on they would turn in to an hour, hour and a half. And some of the recordings I remember hearing is somebody being on a train, um, somebody at a basketball game, or just some kind of mumbling in the background. And the whole idea, the whole idea behind this is it would either um, it would be an 800 number that would go to an individual that would think it's a pocket dial and keep just holding on the call, waiting and saying, hello, hello, but really it's a recording that's playing. Or it would be recorded by the 800 number who would go to their voicemail and try and fill up an hour, an hour and a half with that. So the question I have for you is, how is money being made there? Yeah. I'm a 900 number, I can see it, but not an 800. No, nope, this is an 800 number. This this is pretty, very clever. Yeah, the only the only thing I can see is that a competing business might pay you to DOS a business with this. Yeah, so here's what it is. When the 800 numbers came about, it was the big telco companies that owned those. And when the phone calls would come in, Right. If it was going, um, it, if it was coming from a small telco company, 
and going to the larger telco company like AT&T, GTE, pick your company, it was ruled that the, the larger company or whoever had the 800 number would have to pay a few cents a minute to direct that call onto AT&T's network. Carriage fees. Correct. Yes, exactly. Yeah. So you would think, well, you know, that's only a few pennies here and there. But we're talking millions, um, if not tens of millions of calls per day, which was just enough to fly under or just low enough to fly under the radar of AT&T and FBI. But it was enough to make a considerable amount of money. And I don't know if he was ever caught, but I do know that there was a telephone conference that was taking place. And there was an investigator running around asking if somebody had ever heard of this type of attack before. And around midday, all of a sudden, all the calls were shut down for that day that they were monitoring. Yeah. So somebody knew something at that conference and shut it off. And I don't know what the outcome of that is, but I kind of like hearing these, these kind of clever hacks that are clearly illegal. Yeah. All right. So clever one, huh? Oh, yeah, yeah. All right, so Irvin, you got one about Mac? Yes, Monday was Patch Tuesday for everything Mac. Mac has Patch Tuesday? Yeah, but they, it's not as frequent as... But they have it on Monday, Windows. so they're, they're ahead of the game. Yeah, they're ahead of the game by a day. Yeah, so all Apple devices had a big old update. Yesterday, it's for everything from Bluetooth to Find My, uh, some kernel stuff. Yeah, maybe I should there, look stuff again. Yeah, yep. th there's there's nothing like starting your week with a broken Mac update. Is it broken? No, it's but... a Mac update, so I would assume so. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're afraid you get this bitter attitude. It's very, yeah. Windows updates and Linux updates are broken a lot too. <laughs> All right. So, you know, Erwin, do you have some more? Well, no, go ahead, Doug. Yeah, I was going to say, since we're on the topic of updates and uh, different operating systems, Microsoft just recently announced that Windows 10 will be extended for another three years. Oh, good. And in the past, they would have vendors pay a substantial premium for the support. But this time it's a little bit different because they're offering support to consumers. So there's a pay service, oh. paid service that you can continue to get updates for next three years. And, and much, any idea what the cost is? That's what I want to know, how much? Yeah, that's what everybody else wants to know because Microsoft has declined to <laughs> state at this time. So we'll, we'll see on well, that. <laughs> So that's why Microsoft requires a TPM for Windows 11. It makes whole, it makes sense now. Yeah. And and you know how much would you pay for Windows 10? Boy, I wouldn't pay much. Well, it's it's available and it's been hinted and I think it's pretty clear just based on the rumor mills that Windows 12 will be out next year. I saw another rumor that said it won't, that there's a snag. So you might have better rumors than I do, though. Well, we have to talk rumors because that's all that's what that's what yeah. this industry is all about. Right? Windows 12 is supposed to be out. First, they said it would be out in June. It would be all full of AI. And then they said maybe they decided not to do that at all. But I don't know. So it was Acer who leaked that it was going to be out in July. But typically, Microsoft releases around October for the holiday you know, season going on out there. And they could be like Vista and announce the hardware specs and then not get it out in time for Christmas just to ruin everything. Exactly. Exactly. And along with this, um, and I'm not up on this, but let me bring this out, that Microsoft, it looks like there's some specialized AI chips. Well, there better be. I mean, why would anybody buy it? unless it does something really exciting and new. And if it does good AI, that would be something. Yeah, well, what, what I'm getting at is your computer system, if you're buying one right now, you better buy one with the AI chip, or you better consider buying one with one of the AI chips, specialized chips in them. That would be a TPU. That would be better, yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. You know, I just was teaching my machine learning class today, and there was a project where I warned students that it will take more than, it'll take like an hour and a half to do this machine learning task. And one of my students said, oh no, you can turn on the GPU and it goes through in two minutes. And it does. And there's a TPU in Google Colab too, but you'd have to refactor the code to use that. But still, it was very impressive. The difference between not having a, a good AI chip and having a, and using a CPU is huge. Yeah, okay. Okay. Yeah, what, what, oh. Go ahead. I, I was going to say, so I, I've had this issue where I have this 4090. And I'm like, great, I get to do AI. But one of the things that prop, cop, that cropped up is that a lot of these models require so much VRAM that even these high-end graphics cards are really struggling. Hmm. And, yeah. and you're going to need disk space. So now we go back to large drives. Well, Google Colab is really nice. <laughs> All right. Well, let's, uh, let's go back to Caitlin with yet a new Wi-Fi. Uh, yeah, I just upgraded my access point, so I'm like fully Wi-Fi 6, and yeah. then this comes out. So. I just got Wi-Fi 6, and it is really fast. It, it, well, yeah, that's true, if you have a device that supports it. Um, so uh, the, here's an article on Tom's Hardware by Anton Shilov, uh, talking about Wi-Fi 7, which just got approved by the IEEE, one would assume it's the IEEE, and it's 4.8 times faster uh, than Wi-Fi 6. Uh, and so looking, yeah, so it's going to be 802.11be, uh, that's the official name. And all I can tell is that they are expanding the bandwidth to 320 megahertz. They're going all the way up to 4,096 QAM. Um, and of course, doing all the stuff like MooMimo and uh, OFDMA. Um, so uh, MooMimo. Five what? Is it still running at 2.4 and 5 gigahertz or is it 2.4, using... 5, and 6. Oh, the 6 is new. 6, six was introduced back in Wi-Fi 6. Oh. And it was actually kind of an issue because some radar systems yeah. work very work on like 6 gigahertz or around there. So there was a lot of like, is this going to interfere or not? But um, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a slightly faster, and apparently it was developed with AR and VR in mind, which kind of tells you how far back the specs go for planning, um, back yeah. when the metaverse was going to be the hot thing. But uh, yeah, it's coming out um, eventually, one would assume. So, You know, when we went to CPTC at Stanford a few weeks ago, we were doing our pen testing contest, and the building was full of like more than 100 Stanford students spending all day at a meeting. When I asked them what they were doing, they were doing VR. And I, I felt sorry for them. <laughs> I, I still think there's a future for VR. The problem is that VR is one of those technologies you have to get perfectly right. There is no like kind of VR, like you know how computers sort of built up from the ground and got progressively better. You sort of have to start at a reasonably priced, like almost perfect headset, and then everyone will be in on VR. Because right now having these big boxes that give you headaches, that are a pain to use, I mean, it's just not going to take off. I think Apple brought one out a few months ago and people said it was a lot better, but then it just vanished. It's never to be heard of again. It's also like $3,500. Yeah, that might. It, yeah. If, yeah. App, if Apple could price it to $300, we would all be doing this meeting in VR right now. <laughs> Speak for yourself. But anyway. I'd, I'd want to do it in VR. Hmm. I, I, it on top of my glasses, you know. I, I'm highly skeptical. Along the same lines, where are we with augmented reality? That would be better, but I think we're also nowhere for the same reason, because there's no device you can stick on your face that's comfortable and effective enough and cheap enough. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Um, I mean, all the newer headsets are focused on AR as well. So when I say VR, I'm also implying AR as well. So like the Apple one has really good cameras. But like I said, it's one of those things that needs to be perfect. It's like that unca uncanny valley. Yeah. Where, you know, if it's just slightly off from reality, it's just sort of like not good. <laughs> so, but yeah, whoever does it will make a pile of money. And I would have thought Apple could do it. Maybe they still will. A Apple, Apple's doing it. Their headset is fantastic. It's just $3,500 and no one's going to spend that much. And well, well they do on that. the computers. Apple fanboys will spend a yep. lot of money. They, if they got it down to like 1,000, the Apple fanboys would probably snap it up. 
yeah, like I said, just get get the price down, yeah. and it'll it'll take off. Yeah. All right. And so uh, I was amazed by this uh, Coinbase. So a doctor put his money on Coinbase, and he turned on two factor authentication, and Coinbase advertises that they have bank level security. So then somebody called up, got found out he got in his account, defeated the two factor, got them to turn it off, and stole all his money. And he and he complained, and Coinbase said, "Oh, in our terms of service, we say that if our security fails and someone gets in your account on our server and steals your money, we're not liable. So we're not giving you anything." And I don't think you can do that. I don't think putting that in your terms of service means that when it's clearly your fault, that you aren't responsible. So we'll see what happens with that in court. But that sounds really bogus to me. So any, any idea how much money we're talking? $348,000. So and by not the, a lot of money, but for yeah, but a lot you know, of people, it is a lot of money. But you know, his account was frozen because he owed Coinbase 40000 So the crooks paid the 40000 and then they get it, let him in the account, and then they stole it all. So, but I think Coinbase has got to answer some hard questions. Wait a minute. I didn't do anything wrong. You let somebody in my stuff, and then you say I'm you're not liable. Like, what the hell? Anyway, so uh we'll see what comes of that. We'll see. That's a that's a good one. Yeah, so so Urban's got the Russians attacking the schools. Supposedly. Some Russian hackers have been hitting multiple Ohio schools, saying that there's bomb threats. But how is that even hacking? Are you just calling them on the phone or what? Yeah, just calling on the phone, making a bomb threat, scaring people. And But it doesn't say it's how they're leaking it to Russia. Yes, so, now that you yeah. mentioned it. <laughs> they're just saying it's Russian, but... I saw the same article and I noticed the same defect. They said the same method was used to fake bomb sets in several schools so it's the same people but uh how they may blame the russians is not obvious yeah and and how i assume this is just people angry about ukraine just finding some random way to express contempt for america it doesn't seem like much of a serious attack or it's just a bunch of kids who are bored and trying to find something funny to do yeah yeah you know why don't they just spread cryptocurrency like real script kitties instead of i mean i mean uh crypto lockers you know what's this nonsense I don't know. Kids yeah. these days. Kids these days need better education. They do. They do. All right. And, and you've got another one, right, Doug? Yeah, I do. This one uh, was on Marketplace Tech today. And they're talking about premium internet domain names. So we all know .com, .edu, .gov. Those have been around. But the premium ones are like TV, which is for the island of Tevalu. Yeah which is in, for those of you who don't know, I had to look this up, but it's one of the South Pacific islands um, around Samoa, Tonga, Fuji, Fiji, my mistake, Fiji, um, Northeast of Australia. And interestingly, about 10 years ago, they signed an agreement with, um, oh, who's the domain? Uh, I who was one of the first ones. Um, no, daddy. No, no. GoDaddy is who they're with now. Ver, Verizon, Ver, Verisign. Verisign. Thank you. Yeah, they made about a million, two million dollars. And this last year, they made ten million dollars. So pretty impressive. Yeah. And they're using those for uh, paving roads for improvements. They're expanding their electrical grid. But the ironic part of this is while they're doing all this, it's also threatened by sea level rise yep. because of climate change. But the TV is, you know, is used by Twitch and a lot of other companies. Uh, Anguilla, which is in the British Colum uh, Caribbean islands, is making $3, or $3 million per month, per month, $3 million. And uh, according to the article, it's uh, about a third of the island's GDP that's coming in. So that's pretty substantial. Then there's another one, it's called the Chagos Islands, which is off the Southern coast of India and they're .io. So oh. another one, another vanity one, if you will, 
or premium. So the UK and the US moved all the inhabitants off or the vast majority of them, and they turn it into a UK, joint UK US military base, which is kind of interesting. Now the profits for IO are going to a company that's called Internet Computer Bureau. Now I'm sure you've heard of them, right? Sort of a generic name, if you will. So the Chagos Islanders have not received any of the money that's collected. So there's no benefit there. How many times have we heard that story? Yep. Then you've got the UK government that's claiming, oh, we're not getting any of the money. But the CEO of the Internet Computer Bureau is saying, oh, yes, you are. So there's no, um, yeah. there's no, I, at least I did not hear or find any uh, dollar amount of what we're talking about. But yeah. it's another one of those that's kind of an interesting story that's going on there. You know, I've heard this a million times. Remember 30 years ago, they passed the California lottery and the money was supposed to go to the schools. And yet some, yep. none of the money ever found its way to the schools. Well, they just haven't taken in enough yet to yeah. have some of it be available for the schools. A lot of overhead with the lottery, you know? Yeah, that's it. <laughs> yeah. 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 They, have to, they have to hire more administrators, Sam. Yeah, exactly. That's, that's exactly. exactly. If it didn't go to the schools, that's what they would do with it. But yes. All right. And so you got, uh, Caitlin has abusive QR codes. Yeah, so this is nothing new except for the fact that some new players are getting involved. Um, so I'll switch over to the article. Ooh, so do this is, tell. Yes. Do tell. So this is Ars Technica, and this is Dan Godden, who we've had on this podcast a million times. Dan is this podcast savior. We love your articles, Dan. Um, and this one, uh, the new player is the FTC. So this has become such a problem that the FTC has gotten involved. And essentially what's happening is that criminals are replacing QR codes on things like, you know, restaurants, menus, or when you go to pay for your like parking, you know, there's sometimes a QR code. Uh -huh. uh, people are just replacing them. Like everyone knows how QR codes work. Everyone can generate their own QR code. There's no way to tell if that QR code comes from a trusted source. And so of course, yeah, criminals are just going to town on it. And, and it totally makes sense. Um, like, I was going th going through it in my head and I was like, how hard would it be to replace a QR code on say like a parking garage and have it go to your site instead and then just charge like an extra two or $3 and then pay for that person's ticket and then, you know, take home the $3. How long would it take for someone to even notice that's happening? Like, well, you remember like, there was the guy that was the parking lot attendant and worked a whole career and retired. And then they found out there never had been an attendant at that parking garage. He just yep. acted smooth and collected <laughs> a tip every day for like 20 years and nobody figured it out. Exactly. Exactly. No one's looking at these parking garages and stuff. So it's become a huge problem and the FTC is getting involved. They're saying, don't trust QR codes. Um, so it'll be interesting to see if there's any sort of solution we can get to this because no one wants to type in a long URL and yet we can't trust QR codes. So maybe we'll need something like, like sort of like a trusted QR code type system where everything is signed um, in, in some fashion to make sure you know who's you know, doing it. I don't know, but anyway. You just, just put a padlock logo on it that'll solve the problem. oh yes there we go <laughs> <laughs> but you know th this isn't new this has been around for 10 years right yeah this is this has been around for a while um absolutely nothing new like i said it's just a new player yeah. the, the ftc yeah because um, because it would be easy to come up with a sticker right just print it out and you go on bart which is our local metro system and sometimes you see a qr code and there's a sticker over the top of it yeah. because they've updated the terms of service, if you will. Yeah, right. Um, so, you know, I, I would argue that people are comfortable seeing a sticker over a QR code that's mm -hmm. a QR code, but you're yeah. right. We need the padlock. Yeah. You know, I yeah. think I think they're using it to protest the Ukraine war in Russia. I think I heard some woman is getting in prison for this. She would go to the grocery store and put up QR codes. And when you scan them, it says, you know, stop the war or something. Hmm. No profit motive there. 
No, quite the opposite. But, yeah, quite the opposite, right? Well, anyway, I got a couple here. So, so this was pretty good. You know, everybody's fleeing Twitter. Like I left a long time ago. A lot of people left, and now the advertisers are all boycotting it. But the people who are not boycotting it are the Democratic office holders, like Ale like Joe Biden and Alexander Ocasio Cortez, and all the rest. The Democrats are spending tons of money advertising on Twitter. And I think what's going on is they just haven't kept up with the times. I mean, they used Twitter, which was an effective way to reach their people a year or two ago, but they're still splurging on the political ads. They haven't started cutting off their ads yet. So that's pretty ridiculous. And uh, the other one that's hmm. hitting a lot all over the place is the Texas top court. You know, Texas has abortion ban, but the exception for the life of the mother. And as all the um, uh, women's rights advocates have been saying, there is no such thing as exception for the life of the mother. And that's been proven again. There's a woman who needs an abortion. The fetus won't live and her life is threatened. And the court said, oh, no, uh, the doctor said it's his professional judgment that you're at risk. But he has to use different words to state that the words with which he expressed it do not sufficiently match the statute. So you can't get an abortion. And that's what they all say. I mean, if you have some exception for the life of the mother, all that means is the doctor can't give it to you until he goes to the board of directors who have to ask a lawyer and nobody dares make the decision. So you might as well just admit you've 100% banned abortion and there are no exceptions because that's what it really is in practice. Anyway, so. Yeah. So is that the woman, did, did she travel? She did. Or, uh, After yeah. this, she fled, she fled the state to get her abortion. But and, she, and yeah, and now there's talk about going after her and the people that assisted her. Oh yes, that's for the yes. So I, I, you know, how far do we take this? If she took a Southwest flight, let's say, so does that mean the pilot, the airline, everybody that served her drinks, uh, moved her baggage? In principle, it could mean all that, and it's a five thousand yeah. dollar payday to the individuals that choose to sue. I'm amazed these lawsuits haven't come in yet because that law has been around for a year. And it's just yeah, free right. money for people. Um, so we'll see if people finally start doing those lawsuits. It's um, Yeah, it'll be interesting. Yes, it will be. And sort of horrifying as the Republican states descend into the handmaid's tale. But that's where we're heading. Anyway, and so Irvin has got uh, a couple more. One about, about Toyota and Walgreens. Yes. So uh, Toyota was hit with a breach. A while ago. Again? Uh, again. <laughs> and information is getting leaked out yet again. They demand the threat actors demanded eight million with ten days to respond. And go figure they uh Toyota did not. And so that information is out and about. Great. So Probably mine. A, I'm sorry? I've got a Toyota, and so does about two thirds of my neighbors when I walk around the parking lot. So I guess we're probably all in there. Uh, I think you're there if you have a loan with them. Oh, well, I don't have that. That's yeah. one good thing about my advanced vehicle. I did not need to get a loan to get it. <laughs> this is true. Your your vehicle passes all detections. It 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 has a whole lot of special advanced features. Yeah. Yes. Uh, the the Walgreens one is the one that came out today at noon our time that all these pharmacies do not need a warrant to give up your medical info to just right. anybody <laughs> the cops can just show up to cbs oh. and ask for information about you and they'll get it so they're patriotic they support law enforcement exactly they're, and, and, they're and very you're patriotic and you see something wrong about this. I see nothing wrong with it. It's perfectly fine. Well, the cops have access to all our records without adjusting HIPAA or anything like that. Yes. So, Erwin, is this California or is this nationwide? Uh, this is nationwide. So we can go back to Texas here, or we can see who's getting what type of medicine. That's right. Yep. No warrant required, huh? No warrant required. And you know, they're going after contraception next. Well, yeah, if they can get access to that, that's easily next. Yeah. All of the big pharmacy chains in the U.S. hand over sensitive medical records without a warrant. That's interesting. Mm -hmm. It'll, it's so. So I, wonder, I 
just, if you just went and got a police costume and walked in, if that would do. Maybe have a, like a police ID, better looking badge, probably yes. Which would cost like ten dollars at a costume jewelry store. Anyway, go ahead. No, no, just, just get a security guard's outfit. Yeah, that way you're not impersonating a police officer. Anyway, what was yours, Caitlin? Uh, I was gonna say, you know, with all this stuff going on, especially with the assault on women's rights. Yeah, I, I really don't know, you know, how this is gonna work for the. Republicans long term, because I think in the short term, sure, people are going to be like, yeah, whatever, but it's going to hit home. You know, somebody's kid is going to need an abortion. You know, the the politicians, even, you know, their kids will need an abortion or they'll need an abortion. And uh, it's, you know, it's going to be interesting to see how this plays out long term. Um, We're talking about, Caitlin, the Republicans don't ever do abortions. Yeah, they do once in a while. They are they are so conservative. They they would never do anything unholy as needing an abortion. So so so, Irvin. The I mean, I know you're being sarcastic, but the thing is, is that most Americans agree on most issues, um, including like abortion. Like, believe it or not, the no one should ever get an abortion is actually a very. It, it's not. I'm not. It's not an unheard of position, but it's a bit extreme. Uh, most Americans, you know, are pro you know, women, you know, making their own choices, right? Or pro-choice, essentially, uh, left or right. Um, and seeing these policies come back to roost, I think is going to be, it, it's not going to play well into the Republicans uh, moving forward. It, maybe it's not going to be a huge impact like this coming election, but in like 10 years, I think it's it's going to be an issue, especially if the blue states continue, you know, to allow, you know, women to have bodily autonomy. Well, I mean, it would be nice if what you're saying comes true, but there's an alternative system. If Trump gets in and shuts down the independent news and just replaces all news with propaganda, then they can just tell people it's not happening. And uh, that would be another way to solve the problem. It would. I I wouldn't want to see that, mostly because I would have to move, and that's a big pain. But, yep. um, yeah, we'll see. Yeah, yeah, which... And, you know, I really or really don't want Trump to win, but Biden is in such bad shape. He is. They really need to run a different candidate. And the Democrats are too dumb to figure it out. I mean, it's appalling. He's losing badly to Trump in the black vote, the Hispanic vote, the young vote, all the Democratic staple and, and the Muslims, all the people that the Democrats had, they're losing. It's uh, it doesn't look good for Biden. Nope, but we'll have at least one more election that we can participate in before we have to figure out what to do next. That's right. And, uh, you know, even if Trump wins, California will continue to be an oasis of liberalism for some period of time. But mm -hmm. uh, yeah, yeah, we might, we, might, we might be living in more exciting times. Yeah. You know, Argentina is beautiful this time of year. Argentina? No, yeah. Yeah. yeah, no, we don't, we don't want to go to Argentina. Um, there, there is a chance that we can go to some places uh australia i think would be a good good destination um spiders are kind of a problem they are new but, zealand would be better yeah there's new zealand is also a good a good good place canada's not that bad canada's not that bad oh. it's just it's cold yeah but they don't have those spiders that's true <laughs> but but keep in mind australia also has kangaroos well that's true and koalas yeah, although the Australians I knew hated kangaroos. They just get in the way. Although everybody loves koalas. Nobody yes. has a bad thing to say about koalas. No one. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, that's it for this one. And we'll have another one on Friday.